Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Karo Hono no Koku in episode number 9 and 10 reaction. Okay, the previous two episodes. Um, It was a interestingly done episode, those two of them, because it felt like it, like, you know, it was like the same thing, but seeing the stuff from two different people's perspective. Uh, one was <clears throat> Leon and the other one was Armin. Like, Leon's part of the story was that he... Like, you know, he, he kind of gets a little into a little fight with his dad, as always, <laughs> and gets out and he kind of gets um like, you know, into a fight with Bernardo. I think that was his name. Yeah. Or Bernardo. What was his name? Something like that. Um, <clears throat> gets into a fight with it, sees that he's a Makai knight and um, Emma tries to help him, but he gets unconscious and then taken by a, a weird old guy. To a place where there's this whole thing like you know where there's like this church that's actually disguised and the people in the church are disguised you know as uh, while their actual occupation was basically uh, kidnappers and uh, you know ch uh, like traffickers like kid like children traffickers and that's what they were doing Leon kind of forgot for a moment what who he was but then kind of gained that like you know like it was a temporary little I think amnesia kind of thing uh, but by the end of it, like, you know, he kind of fights and, you know, defeats the hollow that is, uh, not hollow, horror, oh my god. <laughs> horror that is actually one of the kid children that they had previously taken and, you know, who had this kind of revenge thing going on within him. And by the end of it, everything kind of goes well and he defeats them and he comes back. And then there's the next episode where we see everything from Erman's perspective, where he kind of goes on a like in a completely bizarre journey. <laughs> where as always, like you know, like there's like he's at first he's with a girl, and then he gets like chased in by the the different people. And like here we get a little flashback, which kind of explains the whole situation with Bernardo, Erman, and Anna. We get a little story, and as far as I could tell, Bernardo became. Um, like you know, like, like taken over by a horror because he probably defied the law, and I think he probably killed a few people uh, during that last scene where he was like you know holding off uh, <clears throat> the uh, like you know the, the the people who were trying to capture them to getting uh, to Arman and Anna, and um, yeah, that's that's just a guess I think it, it's probably what happened, and um, yeah, like that flashback came in. And then there was that whole thing with the, the horror and that, that girl that got involved in it, you know, like Ar Arman comes and saves her, all that stuff, you know. And um, yeah, by the end of it, we see, like, you know, Arman there, like, kind of giving a little advice to Le Leon. And he's like, you know, like, you know, you're standing there naked, like, who, who, what are you to tell me? Just shoves the money in his face. <laughs> that was funny. Anyways, let's see. Let's see what this episode brings. This is episode number nine of Garo Hono no Kokuin. So I'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. Okay, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. Whoa, what the? Pandras. Hmm. Oh, are we going to get an Alphonse episode here? Like, that's why they're showing the flashback? Or oh, the recap, sorry, not flashback. Hmm. Ooh, nice. Improved by quite a bit. Or maybe not. All right, here we go. Oh, that's some cool. That's a really like that sword, the shape of it, the the one that Alphonse holding. It looks like um, I don't know what they call it with a flat end. You know, it looks like a cleaver or something. Oh. Oh no. Oh my god. 
Wait, what's happening to him? Oh my god, is, does he have like some kind of a life-threatening, I don't know, like some problem, some disease or something? And I'm guessing if that really is the case, and that's why I'm guessing he's trying to find a successor or something. And I doubt um, Alfonso knows that. New hope. Okay. Oh, we're back here. This is the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, he's here. Wait. So oh, is this like a? I thought what this girl is. Okay, I'll talk about it later. For a horror to train myself. Oh, wait, what? Okay. Oh, it's like a snake. Oh, never mind. It's not a Yeah. Huh. Orvian. Ah. Uh, but he'll be there, or I don't know. Oh boy. So I'm guessing this place where they come, like Leon, uh, uh, Ehrman also come, came here before. So is this like a temporal space where all the Maka Knights can access or something? Like, like, I doubt they're at the same place. So this is like a dimensional. I don't know. Like everyone can access this, all the Maka Knights on, only? Oh boy, the same thing. Oh, maybe she'll she'll tell him to go to maybe the same horror she'll recommend. Or maybe not. Let's see. Yeah, it is. Okay, I thought that was like a physical space or something, like a, like a, a house or a church, whatever that Garm girl is, like, you know, staying. But no, it's like a, I guess, father. Oh, his. Oh, okay. Oh, he, he misheard her. Hmm. Hmm. Oh. 
Yeah. Hmm. Oh boy. Hmm. Okay. Whoa. Oh, it's the car Yeah. Oh no, don't fall into that whole thing of like, oh, I need more power. Like this is also like a, like a negative feeling which horrors might try to take advantage of. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so he's not going, okay. Makes sense. I wonder if they're going to do the same, like, you know, like both Rion, oh no, and Alphonse. Oh. Oh, there you go. That's, they're going to the same place. Um, what the? You're lying, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do we run out? <laughs> the way he ran away. And he leaves. <laughs> Alright, they at least they met. Oh my god. Oh, uh, Oh boy. Yeah. It, I think it's like the first time f for everything for him. He, he's like, he's been in the kingdom and everything. Okay, so they're like, so they're cousins, aren't they? Yeah. Leon and yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I think they're going to the same place or something. Let's see. Hmm. I wonder who he's like like the, the one thing that Garo said to him like on the previous Garo that the one you're protecting like no that's not horror that's Alfonso isn't it yeah like the one who you should protect like I wonder who that is for Leon who is she he protecting I don't think it's his dad okay <laughs> well, turns out we both are Makai Knights. <laughs> yeah, like this? You're a bad liar. <laughs> oh boy. What the? <laughs> uh. Great. Hmm. Oh, 
Oh my god. Oh, this is a file. And that's the sun, I'm guessing. Yeah. Oh, he wasn't able to inherit it. He died before that, okay. All right. Okay, so I, I'm guessing he's sick or something. Maybe some illness he has. Whoa, what the? Wait, who is this? Not Garo. Okay, like Yep, same target. Same target. Yep. And then I just team up, you know. Oh boy, here we go, the Kamira is here. Yes. Whoa, what the? That's not a Kimaira? What is that? It's like a four. There's a whole. What is that? It's like a door. Um, that's definitely doesn't look like a Kimaira. Like the traditional ones that we are. Like, Oh my god. Oh boy. Oh. Oh. He has someone to protect, like that's what I'm mean. like, you know, Leon doesn't have anyone if you think about it like that, but Alphonse has a lot of them. Oh, nice. Woohoo. Damn. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah, there you go. How do you even defeat this thing? It's like a... Okay. Alright. Is it over? I don't think so. Maybe the door will open and something else will pop up. <laughs> I don't think so. It's that easy. Yeah. Damn. Oh my god, I was correct. The door is opening and something's going to pop out. Oh, so the Kimara is inside it. Okay, makes sense. Or maybe not. What is that? What the? Whoa! <gasps> oh my god, yo! Just annihilated the whole place. Alright, so... What? Yeah, he's, he's going to transform. Going 
going to transform. There you go. Yeah, the one he saw in the painting or all right here we go oh is it going in or maybe not whoa okay Ooh. All right. Yeah, oh my god. I think yeah, he needs help. How the hell do you defeat this thing? <clears throat> oh wait he's here oh here we go he's, he's transforming Damn! <laughs> Alright, he's a Makai Knight of Defense, so I don't think this will pose a problem for him. Oh! Wow, what the hell? It's colorful! <laughs> Look at this! Alright, okay, nice! Yeah, he's not okay. Oh boy. Oh no! Whoa! What the hell? Oh, he trans- Oh my god, he transferred it to him. Oh my god. Oh my god, come on, quick. He's... Yeah. Him for this... Oh no! Oh my god! Oh! What the hell? I was not expecting... Alright, here we go! Oh my god! Damn! Oh! Yo! Alright, he got it. Oh my god, yeah, he's really dead. What the hell? I was not expecting him to die. Huh. 
Wow. Ugh. This song, this song, this really reminds me of Nier Automata, the, like, you know, the, the music that plays. Like, you see, like, the, the music that was playing a few seconds ago? That's like Nier Automata's music, isn't it? It's like, is it like the same person who did that or something? Oh, okay. Alright, uh, I was not expecting him to die here, like... Like they suddenly brought, like you know, like showed us like you know, he was sick. Like I guess he would have either way died eventually, even if he survived this one, because it did not seem like he was okay at all. He said like my time is come or something. But I was not expecting all of this to happen like in this one episode. Like we we got the like you know information that he's probably going to die in this episode, and he. <laughs> And like not only that he even died in this episode like usually what happens is like we get the you know like information that yeah someone's going to die and it kind of goes on for two or three episodes and then maybe by the fifth or sixth episode that person like you know dies eventually like the information we get a little earlier like because you know like we we kind of feel sad about the whole situation and everything and then when he eventually dies it kind of hits us you know that emotional thing so that's why you know like they do that but i was not expecting everything to happen in one episode that's it all right this was the end of this episode okay um all right so this episode here it was uh i have to say this is probably um an alphonse episode like Leon was also here, but he, I don't think this episode was for him at all, <laughs> because we basically see um, how Alfonso defeats the, you know, um, the horror, and yeah, he, he inherits the Gaia armor. All right, so in the beginning, we see both, like, you know, Alfonso fighting, or not fighting, but training. Raf, Raf, what was his name? Raphael, yeah. He, no, was it Raphael? What the hell? What was his name? <laughs> Just a sec. Oh my god, I'm, I'm mixing everything up. Just a sec, let me check. Was it Raphael or was it Lucifer? <laughs> what the? Just a sec, guys. I, I'm very confused. I've com I completely. Raphael, it was Raphael, okay, not Lucifer. Anyways, <laughs> I don't know why I suddenly thought Lucifer. Okay, um, Raphael. So, Raphael also comes and like, you know, starts uh, helping him out, a little bit of training and everything. And, um, okay, now here's the thing. Then we see Raphael go to that place. That place where Garm, like, you know, usually stays. Now, you know what? I, up until now, I thought, like, this place was some kind of a place which physically exists or something. Maybe this place does physically exist. But I thought it was, like, you know, like, some, some kind of a room or some kind of a hall where, like, you know, the Makai Knights knew they went and, like, you know, kind of uh, talked with her, got some, like, you know, information and stuff. And she kind of hanged around there. I thought it was something like that. But then when I saw like Raphael also coming in, I was like, wait a minute. So like a few episodes back, Leon also came, uh, Ermin also came here. And uh, Raphael and Ermin are definitely not in the same place. I think so at least. Um, so this, this is probably like a dimensional, like, you know, portal or something where someone if, like, you know, if trans like, you know, gets into that place and comes here, like, you know, like some, I don't know, some kind of a interdimensional travel or something like this is like a place where all the Makai Knights can go and they have the information of coming to something like that. And turns out I was right. By the end of it, we do see like 
uh, I don't know if they showed this before or not, but no, I don't think they showed us like, you know, how Leon went came here. Uh, but here we clearly see that um, Raphael gets in through that that little that, that that window pane or whatever it's called. I don't know what it's called. You know, the one with the pictures painted on it um, gets in and through that. And it's like it, I, guess, I guess it's like acts like a portal or something to come here. And I'm I'm guessing uh, Erman also does something like that um, and gets here when he comes. All right, so here he comes towards to Garn and asks her, like, okay, like I need a horror, a, like you know, strong horror who, like you know, who I will, you, like you know, I will let Alfonso fight so that he can become capable enough and to uh, inherit my armor. And Garn does kind of warns him that this is not a, an horror, a horror that like you know like a, a novice can deal with or or what was it called or anyway it's like Kimaira she was talking about now <clears throat> and Raphael was like oh I don't have much time and we did see like you know him kind of coughing up blood and everything and yeah like that that really showed that he is like in a hurry because if he dies before as he said like you know if before uh Alphonse is capable enough to uh, inherit Gaia it it like you know his his Makai armor will as he said in the end I think will wander around without having any proper master and uh, that's one thing he wanted to avoid especially in this situation when Mendoza is up to no good you know like you need as much strength as you need as much Makai um, you know like alchemist or as much uh, Makai knights to fight him so loss of one makai armor means a huge setback in their strength because this is not only um gaia you know like uh, what do you call it uh, gaia alfonso's like you know thing or Raphael's thing this is like this is a thing which actually concerns the whole world so leon erman everyone's involved in this so loss of one armor is a big setback will be a big setback <clears throat> and he like you know he says like oh like if if he dies like you know like i i think that'll be what he was worth that's the stuff like that i, I doubt he's thought of it like that you know he just he just wanted you know him him to quickly inherit the armor that's why i guess he kind of said it like that and he comes out and he kind of like you know sees his son in alphonse uh, yeah, they kind of talk and everything and he tells Alfonso that yeah you will go there and defeat the Chimaira and up like, you know, on the other side we see Leon uh, as well like, going and uh, you know to, to find the same oh no Leon came in I forgot that part uh, Leon came in that space as well that that uh, place where Garm is and he also asked for like you know like a target and this is where I thought like yeah it's probably like you know she she most probably just <clears throat> gave them the same target and uh, i was not completely sure because i forgot the name that she said you not know, the name of the place but yeah that was that was pretty apparent even if you did like you know even if i forgot the name of the place they were supposed to go but anyways um yeah so leon like you know starts the his journey uh alfonso also starts his journey and they meet in the city and uh, <laughs> Alfonso is getting completely ripped off, you know, by like you know the people. Like, and they are like trying to. Um, is it called ripped off, or what is it called? I think so. Yeah, you know, like being um, and not manipulated by being uh, made, you know, like taken advantage of. Yeah, taken advantage of. That's the word. <laughs> and there's this like random guy who <laughs> tried to kind of like you know finesse some money from him it's like oh my my pot it's so such a costly pot you need to pay for it and damn like <laughs> yeah okay so leon comes in and then <laughs> leon is like then he goes on his way and then he sees like everyone's again trying to take advantage of him and like, all of them are like oh come come to my inn come to my inn 
and this really shows how alfonso is like you know has been like a sheltered individual up until now and he's just everything's new for him you know like he's coming outside to the city i'm guessing on his own for the first time most probably and uh leon leon obviously has like you know is accustomed to the outside world so he was like oh my god like this guy he he's going to completely being taken advantage of he's definitely going to be taken advantage of so he's like okay fine <laughs> i'll go and help him out and helps him out like you know uh, finds him an in yeah okay so now <laughs> i love how they like you know they kind of like made this like a little competition like leon just started walking like you know in front and alfonso was like no i'm going to walk in front of him <laughs> back and forth back and forth and this is this will be a good rivalry i think you know this whole thing uh don't know how much it will be a rivalry but i yeah and you know what i think it will probably become like a little rivalry thing because uh now like by the end of this episode we see that uh alphonse was able to kind of uh very easily control gaia and he defeated that horror but leon wasn't able to so i think this will probably become like a like, you know like a, a source of bother like you know some thing for uh leon he'll probably feel a little bit uh, i don't know self-conscious and he'll be like oh he he defeated it so easily i wasn't able to do anything and i'm guessing this will probably become a small little rivalry who knows we'll see uh small little rivalries are healthy you know like it, it is healthy like unless and until you go like you know completely <laughs> You know, to you know, on the other end, like no, like don't do that. Don't, like you know, don't let the rivalry transform into something extremely serious. Like that's bad. But small little rivalry, it's okay. It's fine. It it helps out. You know. Okay. Then we see um, Raphael kind of seeing that flashback of his child, of his kid who probably died. You know, and then we see like him him saying like I wasn't able to inherit the Gaia armor. All right, now we get back to Leon and um, Alphonse, and in comes the Chimera. And my God, when they said Chimera, I was thinking like a lion with a, you know, like how Chimeras actually are. Not a damn, <laughs> what's that? What is that even? Like, that's like a door, like, you know, those doors you see like in a, before like a last boss battle or something with <laughs> these huge doors. Those, those kind, that kind of a thing. You know, it's like it feels as if like it's like a thing where, where like you know some demon lord is sealed or something. That type of a door. It seemed like. <laughs> and I, you know what? I've seen a lot of chimeras. Like chimera, like obviously chimeras does not mean it. It will always be a lion and a snake and not necessarily chimera. I think chimera means that it's like a mixture of different things. That's that's basically a chimera. I think yeah. Like um, if you remember Full Metal Alchemists was it yeah like chimeras there had a very different like you know like you know what it kind of appearance like it was like a mixture of a lot of things you know like different creatures and everything that's a chimera like i i don't know like and this this is like a thing like you know whenever i think about chimera um the, the thing that first pops up in my head is like a lion you know with a snake tail you know like uh, and something um, like that and uh, like those are not chimeras i think i think those are manticores as far as i can remember yeah those are actually called manticores and those like those can be called chimeras as well because it's basically a mixture of different like, you know things like i think that's how it goes if i'm wrong correct me you know like like chimeras are basically like a mixture of a lot of different creatures and things so if you think about it like that i guess you can call this a chimera because it was basically a mixture of things and um but i'll be honest this is the first time at least for me seeing a chimera like this which is basically a door like i've seen a lot of chimeras in a lot of video games and a lot of animals as well different creatures different monstrous creatures but nothing like this this is my first time seeing a door as a chimera i'm like wow this is like a new thing <laughs> i was not expecting that but yeah like they start fighting and i'm like how the hell are you going to fight this this is they're basically a door like, how do you defeat a door <laughs> oh boy and um yeah they start fighting and leon uh, like made a good plan he was like you know what i'm going to start and go for the sides alfonso you go for the actual body 
and he does that he defeats the two like you know the scythe wielding thing the, the the skeletons or whatever and um uh, alphonse comes in tries to defeat like you know i don't know like kind of harm cause harm to it but nothing happens uh no uh the first time nothing happened but the second time he, he was able to kind of like you know cause damage to it and it did stop for a second but then it suddenly like you know opened the doors and <laughs> like it's like a i don't know what that was like a hyper beam or something that just shoots out like annihilating the the mountains and everything and it gets um leon leon is unable to do anything no leon transforms here sorry leon transforms into like you know his makai armor and uh, becomes garo and he's like okay i'll deal with it you you stay here tries to fight it but unfortunately like, you know he wasn't able to by the end of it he gets like you know kind of pinned on in the wall and everything's just like you know like over everyone's like exhausted and everything and in comes Raphael. Raphael is like yeah we're we're definitely going to refuse this don't give up he rushes in no first he wears the armor rushes in and gives a huge damage to it but then gets gets you know, like stabbed and I was really not expecting that, like this, this quickly for him to die. And he, he gives his uh, sword to Alfonso and he's like, yeah, you do it, defeat it. That's what you should do. You are capable enough now. You will be able to handle it. And yeah, he does that. Now, you know what I think of this whole scene? Um, this really shows and gives us like, you know, this thing. Like uh, for, for a few moments ago, we were seeing um Alf uh, leon kind of thinking about like you know uh, what garo said the previous garo said that you need someone to like you know you, you protect something that's going to what you, what's going to give you strength now as far as i can see i don't see leon having anything to protect his dad is capable enough to protect him so i doubt he even thinks that yeah i need to protect my dad definitely not i don't think so um the people I don't think that's how Leon, like, you know, is. Like, Leon, I, I don't think he, he even thinks about protecting the normal people. Like, you know, like, that's, like, that's not him. He's not a hero, you know. He, he's like a, what do you call them? Avenger, you can call him, you know. He's not a hero. Leon is basically an avenger. He wants to avenge his, I think that's, like, his main goal. Like, you know, like, uh, avenge his mother's uh, death or something like that. I'm, I'm not, still not sure. No, and I, I think he himself is pretty confused about what he's supposed to do. Is he supposed to protect people? Is he supposed to avenge his, like, you know, like, his mom, like, you know, all that thing. So he himself is pretty confused, I think. So he's, he's still trying to find the path that he wants to walk on. And that's why, you know, like, he, he has no one to protect. No one. Except himself. Like, that's obvious. But still, <laughs> you know, he has no one to protect. And this... They can, they can just draws a parallel to the whole thing where we can see um what's his name not parallel sorry um this, this shows like how different uh, alphonse is to leon in that department because alphonse has so many people to protect his mom his dad and uh, you know his kingdom his kingdom that's that's like, like a huge thing not only that in this scene he he was supposed to protect um raphael yeah, I, I, I forgot his name for a second. Raphael, he was supposed to protect Raphael as well. And seeing him die in front of him, that I, I think that's why it he got like, you know, just so enraged and he, he just defeated the uh, horror in, 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 in a matter of seconds. Um, this was basically what uh, Garo was talking about, uh, telling Leon, I think. You know, like you need something, you know, like the, the, the thing you want to protect, that will give you strength. Leon doesn't have anything like that while Alfonso has many and I guess that gives him determination and just you know that strength to keep moving forward even in all the different like you know like ad, like you know different situations like bad situation dangerous situations so yeah I think that's how it is basically and he and I'm sure Leon also realized that at that moment I don't know maybe but yeah, he defeated the um, Chimera. In the end, we see like you know he was crying and, and he was like, "I'll be sure to defeat the horrors of this country and protect its people." 
that's where it ended so yeah now in the end there was this little um this song you know that was playing the music let me know is it the same people who made the uh, songs and the music of if you know you know of near automata i'm talking about the game um you know like the the like cat played it and it, it, the, the music is phenomenal there and i feel like it has like the same tune the same vibe as that and i do know like obviously this came a long before near automata so yeah let me know you know like because i don't know if it's just me but this music seems a lot like near automata's music yeah oh my god like you know when 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 you, we used to fight the different bosses and everything like that, that phenomenal music that popped up and not only during fighting during fighting bosses you know even when you're roaming the like you know the place in near automata the whole thing like all the music all the background music sounds like this completely so I'm, i i i don't know maybe maybe it's like the same people yeah so anyways okay that was it oh my god that was a long time i'm talking let me let me just start the next episode quickly all right so that was episode number nine so yeah this will be episode number 10 just a sec um all right so yeah i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here sync it to whichever is your preference and let's get started okay here's the countdown three two one go Oh, we are continuing from that. Okay. Hmm. Okay, okay. Wait. Oh, he, how did he know? How did? He... Oh wait, I think he. Oh, I, I. Okay, okay. Oh yeah, he he was told by Raphael himself. Okay, for, I forgot about that. Hmm. Yeah, he is unable to find a path. I feel like that's basically was bothering Leon. There you go. Like, so like the difference you can see, like, you know, like he has a clear cut goal while Leon has one, but it's not that. Oh, I don't know. Wow, the light and the dark. Oh my God. You can see that, like that, that whole scene of like Alfonso sta standing on the light portion, and like the dark portion is like, um, Leon is just standing there. Like I think this is basically it. Like it is something which which kind of shows how different they are. Like you know their motivations. Like Alfonso is like the light. You know he has this like goal of, oh I am you know like um I'm going to protect my country, my people, my mother, my father. Like these are like noble goals, while Garo, even though he is the like you know he dons the armor of light as they call him, his motivations are are not still that prominent, and he he has this whole thing of, yeah, I'm going to fight because I I need like you know like I think that's his main goal up until now, like vengeance. I think, I think so, you know. And he himself is getting bothered by that, I think, like because he 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 doesn't have like a clear cut goal. He's like, oh, I'm going to defeat Mendoza. Why? He doesn't have any reason for that. Like he's not, like you know, like like Alfonso because he like for Alfonso he he wants to protect everyone and save everyone. Leon doesn't have that, but he's basically fighting against Mendoza because you know the mom. His mom and everything. It's like a vengeance. The reason is basically vengeance, I think. That's why, like, you know, the dark and the light. Alfonso on the light and Leon on the dark side. Whoa, what's happening? Extra security, I think. Oh, 
Yo. Oh, Emma? Is that Emma? There you go. <laughs> oh yeah, that that day, yeah. Um <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder what Oh wait, he brought him? Okay <laughs> Well, he's, um, <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah, oh, so. <laughs> yes. What? Oh wait, he doesn't know us. Oh my god. What? <laughs> what? All right, you know what? <laughs> what? Yeah, that's your uncle. You can see that. Yeah. Yeah, he's like, what? This, this, this thing here? This thing here? <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, he knows. Okay. <laughs> Yo, someone's going to slap him, please. Oh! <laughs> uh, you know what? Let him be. Yeah. Ugh. Damn. <laughs> oh my god. Wait, what the? What's it? Is that a dog? What is that? Yep. Okay. Good for the circle. Oh. He's not happy. Uh. <laughs> Look who's talking. Everyone who was there had done. Oh, that, that scene we saw.
Who the hell is this? Damn. Oh my god, yeah. Brand you for your corruption. Okay, so that's Gaia, isn't it? Oh my god. Like this is wrong, you know, like why would his would he should his uh, you know like children and the future generation suffer for his sins? Okay, so Garo and uh, what's his name? Um, Gaia were here. Oh no. Ah. Oh. Oh my god, this is how he got close to Fernando. Just a sec. Oh, this is how he infiltrated the whole thing. Hmm. This is a king, isn't it? <laughs> what? What the? Wait. What's happening? Oh, these children will also inherit the same. Oh, no. Oh no. What the hell? That's why he hates him so much. Okay, so he tried to change, I guess, you know, by the looks of it, but as soon as he realized that yeah he will always have this branding on him that he hates wait who Oh my god. Hmm. 
you were betrayed by the god of Belinka. All right, so he checked whether he she's. Attack with Alpha. Oh boy. Where he choose to fight? Okay. For a moment I thought like what the oh the yeah. For a moment, I thought that the the lady who he was married to was Octavia. Kind of looked the same, I guess. But then I realized, like, no, they're different. <laughs> what is? Who's this random dog who just? <laughs> is this Emma? No, wait, who? Wait, did a dog kick him? Oh, never mind. <laughs> Uh. <laughs> oh my god. It's like Ankar? Yeah, you can call me dad. <laughs> you can call me dad. Oh no. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> no, he already has a dad. <laughs> <laughs> Yo <laughs> Yes <laughs> Wonderful news <laughs> Oh my god, that's what he's thinking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. Alfonso? Wait, was she, she talking about Leon? Oh, it isn't. Wait, the, the Marcus kind of looks the same as Mendoza. Defensive instinct. Oh. Okay, okay. Certain horror. Oh, that's what. Mm, he she has her own own target. Yep. Oh, that's a death flag. True. <laughs> oh boy. Interest the temple. Hmm. Oh. Did 
to defeat Mendoza first, I think. I think this probably will bother Leon a little bit because he never got to see his mom. So Alphonse talking about her like that, I don't know. Or maybe not, let's never mind. Hmm. Oh no, is she trying to kill herself or something? Oh, okay, never mind. Okay. <coughs> yeah, like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Whoa. Yeah. Mm. Yo, there's something on top. What is that? Oh yeah, that's a horn. Oh my god, this is filled with the horn. Whoa, you cannot defeat so many of them. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. All right. What? Oh, mini boss? Bernardo, yeah. There you go mid boss or something like that everything was in order to yeah all right that's where it ends <coughs> <clears throat> you know what I thought this episode would we would see that um, Leon w was would be feeling a little bit, I don't know, like feel bothered by the fact that in the previous episode, Alfonso was so easily able to defeat the horror, but he wasn't able to do anything. I thought that was going to bother him or something, but it doesn't seem like it bothered him that much. I guess that's good in a way because, you know, like, that is also like, you know, that's like envy. That is also like a negative emotion. And, uh, yeah, I think it's, it, 
Yeah, I think it's good that he didn't feel that way. Okay, I think that's the end. Yep. All right. So yeah, this episode we resume from the previous episode. Uh, at the beginning, we see how um, Alphonse and Leon was, you know, like went back to the, the church place, the thing, the place where uh, Alphonse was. And he's like, uh, oh, I do wonder uh, the you know the thing the horror kind of consumed um, Raphael, I think, yeah. So did they get his body back? I would think they got his body back, or maybe not. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, but yeah, he says like at first Leon was like, well, you should make a grave here and everything, and he's like, no. This this sword and the armor is like a it's indication to me that he's always with me and you know, like I'll fight. Yeah, that's enough. And in the beginning, I I I say yeah, I I talk about this whole thing of like you know when they kind of fling their like, like kind of touch their swords together like this, you can see that the door is actually half open. Like the, the portion where it's open is like light. The portion that's closed is dark. Leon is standing in the dark portion and Alphonse is starting in the standing in the light portion. I talked about it already during reaction uh, But like this this I think like this kind of shows how you know, like Alfonso is like The light or like, you know, he's like the person who's protecting everything like, you know, like it's like a noble cause or something like that while um, Leon is basically the opposite because he's, he's basically doing this for you can say vengeance I don't know. I think that's basically why he's doing it and he doesn't have anyone to protect or any type of like you know reasoning like that so it's like they're like polar opposites in that way but they are walk walking towards the same direction and the same path has the same goal so yeah something like that i guess i don't know hmm. all right then the starts the abel you know the show starts and uh we see like leon leon came back to santa about and he also brought Alphonse with him. He's trying to, like, you know, kind of sneak past the guards, and he meets Emma, <clears throat> and brings Emma to, like, you know, like, meet uh, Alphonse as well. And <clears throat> here, like, you know, we kind of get introduced, like, not we, but they get introduced to each other. And okay, um, here. <laughs> It kind of slips from his mouth that, like, he obviously he didn't know that. <coughs> you know, they're like basically cousins or something like that. And Emma is like, "Wait, what are you talking about? What, what type? Like, you know, like." And Emma didn't know that, obviously. And <laughs> I, I guess that's when, like, you know, they filled her up with all, like, you know, the information and everything. And um, Erman, Erman comes in as always with his antics. You know, <laughs> he comes in and at the beginning he had this weird misunderstanding that he was Anna's, like, you know, child. And he was like, <laughs> he didn't even listen to him. Uh, like, you know, him actually telling the whole, like, you know, scenario and the whole story. He just started, like, like, you know, like jumping into conclusions and he's like, ah, oh, it's fine. Like, you know, everything and just, like, you know, leaves, like, leave me alone for a moment. This and that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Leon is like just leave him alone like you know like he, he needs to learn a lesson the hard way now I don't know where did the dog come from was was the dog with them from the beginning or something like like I, no they, they were alone weren't they like where the hell did that dog pop up from I guess it's it, it was just there okay maybe, maybe it just followed <laughs> probably just followed Arman. Okay, Armin was just sulking away <laughs> at the edge of a cliff. <laughs> yeah. All right. And um, okay, here we get an, a new, not a new information. I think this kind of said this before as well. Um, okay, where is it? Zirkel's Circle. Oh, that's a very confusing name. Zirkel. Zirkel's Circle. A, more, a forbidden mother tool that allows you to control horrors. 
Okay, so this is this is the thing that Mendoza made, I think. Yeah, so it's true he was exiled by the council because he stole. No, he stole it. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, so what did he make? Just a sec. <clears throat> oh, okay, he... The Forbidden Mado tool that allows you to control horror, Zirical Circle. It's true he was exiled by the council because he stole it. Okay, so that's how it's controlling the horrors, I think. Hmm. Now, one thing, you know, like, I, I don't know, I think, like, I had this misunderstanding. I thought, like, he was being controlled by a horror. I'm talking about Mendoza. So, from this episode, I think I am pretty convinced that it's not a horror that's controlling him. It's basically he's using, like, you know, the, the thing to control the horrors. That's why he can control horrors. I thought he could control horrors because he himself is a horror. But that's not how it, it is. Like, you know, he's not a horror. As we get to see from the flashback what happened to him. I'm going to talk about that after this. Uh, so, he is basically using that Mado tool to just um, control the horrors. That's why he can control the horrors. Okay, and then we see a little bit of Bernardo, then like, you know, Mendoza and they, both of them talk and he's like, oh, like, Raphael is dead and he's like, oh, thank God, like, he's dead. Like, you know, the people who were present there are fine and all of them are dead. And <clears throat> now then we get a little flashback where we see him getting excommunicated um, and so he made like a Mado tool which gives them unlimited flowers. Okay, here we go. The Mado tool I have created will give us limitless power. You saw the results of the test. And then we see like an old woman. I don't know who that is. Probably some kind of a, you know, some kind of an elder or a big shot in, in the council or something. And she says like he used human blood for the testing. And he's like, oh, it's fine. Like, you know, we are like superior beings. Why should we like, you know, listen to the humans? Why should we follow like, you know, like, help them out like you know we are people who are supposed to rule this and that like i like you know like the, the, I, I guess that's like from the comments like you know like a lot of people told me that like the reason why the rule of not killing or harming um normal people you know makai alchemists and makai knights can do that is because if they had like you know the like you know like if there was no rules like that they would become people who would be hungry on power and you know kind of go off like you know like you know having like a like what can i say like they'll try to control the people they'll try to rule the people that's what's going to happen and this i i guess this kind of shows that like mendoza here um he disagreed with this whole like thing of them not harming humans and helping them out while they are superior to them and that's why he's like oh like we should rule over the humans but nah that's not how it goes and I guess this is the reason why the rule exists. Like, there definitely will be a lot of people who, who will be kind of like this. Yeah, why should we bow beneath them and live only to protect them? <clears throat> yeah, we should be the ones who stand above them all. <sighs> Mendoza, all of these things are he's saying. And we can see two Makai knights over there. One is Gaia, I think, and one is Garo. And the Garo that we see here is obviously, I think it is Leon's grandfather, the one we saw in that space. That's probably him. And that's why I guess Mendoza said like, oh, finally, all the people who are involved, were involved in that scene are finally dead. Uh, obviously, we do know that Garo, the previous Garo is dead. Raphael died like, you know, very recently. And I guess the old lady is also dead. Most probably. That's why he's like, oh, everyone's dead. All the people involved in that scene. And the, the old lady kind of curses him or something. He's like, she's like, oh, I'm going to brand you for your corruption. You and your children are going to suffer forever. This will be like a mark so that, you know, like you are never able to forget your sins, your past sins, and this and that. And, you know, the, the, like the markings kind of come up. And you know what? I never realized this. This markings kind of look like Leon's markings, you know, in, the, in, the, in his hand and everything. Whenever he gets agitated, the markings kind of pop out. I don't know if this is this that has some connection with this or something. Who knows? Or maybe it's basically because of a curse, like, like a curse. So I guess that's also like a curse. I don't know. Anyways, like, no need to think much about it. I'm sure we'll get our answers. 
Okay. Then <clears throat> now here's the thing that actually surprised me. Okay, so we see that scene and he's like, oh, why should I receive such humiliation? This and that like, crying in the rain. And okay. Now here's the thing. We see like the next scene, he he's in front of someone. I think like he was the king. Is this the same guy uh, who is uh you know who's the king that he's in bedridden now? No, like um what's his name? Alphonse. Is this Alphonse's dad? Who is old now? Is this the same guy? I don't want to know. I think so. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, I think that is okay, okay, you know what? Yeah. I think that is, is the same guy because in the end we also see um what's his name what's her name the the, the lady the guy um, the, uh, the red-haired lady who we see later on who kind of like says that oh i'm going to help you out like an you know, i always forget her name that shakespearean name that the girl has otilande or something like that otilande or something like that forgot you know like she's also here so yeah this i think so this this guy we see this young guy you know who hires him in his country to help him out because of that that ep epidemic that thing that was happening it's it's, Al uh, it's alfonso's dad isn't it yeah i think the king now the thing that actually surprised me here is i think he actually tried to change didn't he like he says like okay i thank no no you know what no he did not change i'm sorry because that scene i remember that scene now he said in that that middle scene he says like oh i i just you know like let the horrors lose that's why the enemy got defeated so he was not he did not change he was still up to no good again you know but there's this one thing that happened that completely made him enraged later on okay so okay let's talk about this little by little first we see him like you know like in, in that place and the king was like saying like oh you did a good job like you know the epidemic through your help we are just like, you know like we were able to <clears throat> be prosperous and like you know like now everyone's fine and then comes again later on we see like you know he he says like yeah your advice was right on target the battle was a great victory for us how do you know and mendoza mendoza's just like you know kind of whispering oh i just let the horrors go towards them that's how i knew and <clears throat> yeah like that scene i for a moment i thought maybe he was trying to change but no like you know that scene shows us like he was again up to no good and he was probably like you know like doing all of these things because he had like a the ultimate goal like you know something that he wanted to do okay um all right so then like the, the king like brings a lady and he's like oh you can, like, you can take her as a wife I'm not letting you go from this kingdom, something like that, he said. And like for a moment there, I thought this this girl was like, you know, the lady we saw. I thought that was Otilanda or something, that, that girl, the, the lady, the, the, the one who, like, you know, helps out the queen, that girl. I thought that was her for a moment, but no, it was not. Okay, and then we get to know that she has a child comes and he obviously he was very concerned and then when he sees the child he's like yeah it's the same like you know like the marking the same marking like you know i i think this scene probably th made me think like oh maybe he tried to change but after seeing his child he went completely like you know um <clears throat> like he became extremely angry and that's why he was like oh i'm going to defeat I i'm going to just kill all the makai knights and alchemists but it is true, I guess, this, like, you know, that situation, that scene of him seeing his child like that probably made him completely lose it. But still, he was up to no good, even before that as well. And while working with the king, he was doing some dubious stuff. Um, yeah, so, like, I guess he's probably, like, that type of a character who just, you know, like, like it is true, I guess, like, even before, he had the best in mind. No, the things that the things he were doing was wrong but he had the best in mind for his people like you know he like in that scene when we see like you know him saying like oh our people will rule over them like you know who are we to bow before the humans he had the good in like you know he, he wanted the good he wanted their like you know people to prosper even if it meant like you know trampling over the people who are you know beneath them that's definitely wrong and that's morally incorrect but what i'm trying to say here is he had like you know like he had the best 
uh, intentions in heart while doing the wrong thing and he was aware of that i think that's what i'm trying to say you know like he did it for his people at that moment and like you know the, his people kind of blamed him for that obviously because it was wrong it was morally incorrect N not only that scene even after that when he gets like you know employed by the king he he's trying to do the same thing again you can see you know to help the kingdom out to win the war he used the horrors that's wrong that's morally incorrect but he's doing it for the kingdom you can say that you know so again we see the same thing he like he, this is like his thing i'm guessing like he he he's like that type of a person like who who's not uh, like you know who who dirties his hand to do something that type of a person and who doesn't think about the morality of what he's doing like he he just wants to accomplish his goal that's basically him i think and yeah but but as soon as he sees his child he's like i'm going to like you know he, I, I guess he killed the child i don't know what happened to the wife not the lady i'm not sure what happened to her and he's like you know, he threw the child in off the cliff i think that's like yeah makai knights makai alchemists all of them i'm going to kill them all your bloodlines as well octavia that's her name okay so the next scene we see octavia comes in and she's like oh i'm the personal maid of the queen and he's like oh like i like you know i i don't believe in gods because the gods never do anything and we can see them but i choose to believe in horrors who we can see and who, who we know that they but where is that part okay um i only believe in the demons who bring misfortune before my eyes yeah there you go not a god that brings us nothing this thing oh boy damn oh and mendoza kind of checks her i guess with the, the thing and he's like yeah she she is like you know she really doesn't believe in gods okay that's when octavia i guess starts helping him out and yeah and then we get shipped back to that scene again with Leon and you know like Armin and the <laughs> the the misunderstanding. Uh, okay, <laughs> that was a funny part when he was like, you know what? Okay, I accept it. It's like he just goes to Alphonse and he's like, you can call me dad. <laughs> then the misunderstanding gets like you know resolved and he's just laughing away. He's like, haha. Like okay, so that's what it is. And he's like, wait a minute, and that means I'm royalty. Okay, like let's let's just go right now and defeat all of them and I'll become like you know this <laughs> the person with a harem and like he's like yeah <laughs> that that oh god that was funny. Okay, um Okay, then we kind of get a little conversation between Emma and um Leon uh Ehrman. Emma says that the Mars that come out you know when leon gets agitated you know, they protect him as well but it he might like you know kind of the feet start feeding on him and like she says like he she doesn't know why that like you know is like you know that those marks are what those things are and she's like like yeah like it might be like a mother's you know like what anna gave to leon before she died or something to protect him but if he like uh, relies on it too much it might consume him the same time and i do find a similarity between the marks that mendoza has and sh what leon has in his you know when he gets agitated i don't know that there's some connection to that and then they like you know start infiltrating this like we see the tower where you know like um the uh, esmeralda is and here um like leon uh, alphonse says like no we are not here to like, save my mother but we're here to defeat mendoza and help the people out like that's what we are going to focus on which is correct i guess but i don't know what leon felt at that moment listening to that because and like for leon like you know um like, you know for him he never got to see his mom so like you know i'm sure like you know things which, whichever things like something involves someone mother, someone's mother he's definitely going to give that first priority and he's thinking most probably like why is he not helping her out because i don't know like this is probably because of that like this is just a guess but i feel like leon would think something like that like oh i never got to see my mom before and 
you know like he has his mom in front of him and he's not like you know going to help her out like this type of a thing like i don't know maybe like you know maybe this is just how i think that leon is thinking maybe he's not thinking of something like that because like I, i've seen something here like you know like whatever leon feels like they never kind of express it you know like it's pretty quiet about most of the stuff like anything that's bothering him like stuff like that he just keeps it within him and yeah we don't know like unless and until he kind of expresses it and who knows maybe maybe he's fine with that it's, it, it's it's alfonso's decision you know it's his kingdom and yeah and we do see like you know esmeralda there and the, the guards are just talking again with each other from moment I thought when she heard that uh, they would try to make Esmeralda like a hostage, I thought maybe she was going to try to kill herself or something. You know, when she kind of looked at the plate, broken plate, I'm like, oh no, like is she trying to going to try to kill herself because you no, know, like she might be used as a hostage, so she would think like I'm going to pose a problem for my son or something, so something like that. But uh, probably not it. Okay, now. All right, the next scene we are like you know like we have kind of infiltrated the whole place and we are underground and we see like it's like like a graveyard or something like made of like you know like the skeletons and everything and horrors pop out one after the other they start fighting and somehow get out of that situation comes up and bernardo is waiting for them and i'm guessing this will be a fight between bernardo and um herman yeah because they're both friends and everything and he like you know this is one thing that is kind of bothering me he asks like leon asks uh, erman asks so will you tell me the reason and bernardo's like well everything i did was in order to fight with you i guess he's talking about this current situation like this situation after he became a horror you know like the horror got to him not before that like i was like wait a minute like so did everything that he do even in the beginning while helping out Anna and him was also that also like part of this plan or something but that's probably not it I guess after he became like you know like he, the horror got to him after that he probably got this like you know urge to fight with him and he's like yeah everything I did after that was because I wanted to fight with you that's why we are here now you know, in front of each other and now we're going to fight all right so that was it Okay, those those two were really good episodes. I really liked it, and yeah, like I I feel like the the episodes are getting good and better and better. Like this this is really great. I'm liking it. I'm really liking it now. This now, like the first few episodes were a little bit slow. I guess they were kind of like you know trying trying to introduce us to every all the characters and everything. But yeah, it's getting better and better. I'm really liking it now. So yeah, that's it. So thank you guys for watching. This is my reaction to Garo Hono no Gokuin episode number nine and ten. So yeah, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to press the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed. Comment down below anything you want to say, anything you want to let me know, and I'll check them out. So yeah, that was it. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next week with two more episodes of Garo Hono no Gokuin. So until then, goodbye and have a nice day.